Disc jockey, drop the bass. Now the heads. Okay, let's talk about this whole humanism plus thing. Though, of course, it's not being called that. Uh, this could be an off-the-cuff video. I haven't pre-prepared anything. So it's going to kind of ramble a bit, and there'll probably be a lot of jump cuts as I get my thoughts together. Okay, there's, a, there's a divide in the atheist and skeptic community and we don't have good descriptions for it so I'm gonna have to make some up and, and bear in mind that these two groups overlap so it's not precise it's just very broad so let's say you've got your skeptical atheists on one side okay and as far as some of you are concerned that side would be the anti-progressive side I would, I would call them the, the sceptical atheists, the people for whom the philosophy of scepticism, of objectivity, of applying logic, reason, and scepticism to everything is, is most important. So that's where you'll find a lot of the, the critics, the online critics, the YouTube critics, and so on, of the progressive side. Okay? And then on the other side, we'll have what we'll call, just for sake of ease, cultural atheists. These people who don't believe in God, but they're not necessarily buying in completely to the whole sceptical outlook. So people who will accept certain things uncritically, and maybe they're atheists because they were against religion because of the effect religion has societally. Maybe that's why they go into atheism. Okay. Obviously, like I said, it's crossover between the two communities, but for sake of ease, sceptical atheists, cultural atheists. Okay. Just roll with it for this video. So for those of you who are unaware, we're currently seeing a kind of replay of the old Atheism Plus split, but this time occurring within humanism. So the American humanists have recently announced all these different subgroups. So you've got a LGBTQ, WTF, BBQ you know, subdivision. You've got a feminist subdivision. You've got a person of colour subdivision. Um, and this has been hailed by cultural atheists as being a wonderful great progressive thing and by skeptical atheists as being a terrible thing and unfortunately the argument isn't being made on the merits of the case instead we have all these usual thought terminating cliches one side oh you're just SJWs on the other side oh you hate women persons of color you're you're a fucking white male all that usual bullshit now most of that is coming from the cultural atheists towards the sceptical atheists, but there is some going both ways. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do <laughs> is deal with something that I've been noticing lots of other places in that nobody is really engaging with the arguments the other side are making necessarily. They are engaging with not even exactly straw men, but they're kind of projecting their own ideas of what the other side is talking about. Now, obviously, I'm on the sceptical atheist side, and this goes for other areas of my life where it interacts with neo-progressivism, the, the regressive left, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. So, obviously, I have a certain bias, but I am trying to work against that here and to foster some kind of understanding and, and bring some of the discussion back on point really. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do here. I failed every other time I've tried to do it, but let's do it again because I never learn. Okay, so here's the thing. From the sceptical atheist point of view, we are dealing with these issues and what my therapist calls sort of third order thought. So we are dealing with principle. Um, that, that That's where we're at. And I think that the cultural atheists are dealing with with things on the sort of second order, um, which is kind of you go beyond the thought into the world, into action. So that's where the conflict lies, I think, because the skeptical atheists see the actions of the cultural atheists as being detrimental, hypocritical, and counter to the goals, to the aims, to the ideology, to the vision. The, the idea that you're trying to promote. So, from our point of view, humanism was always a unifying thing. 
You know, we're talking about humanity as a whole. We're fighting for everybody as a whole. We want everyone to have the best possible chance. You know, or we believe in the human species as a whole. You know, we're trying to move humanity forward. So when you subdivide and you break up humanism into all these different competing subgroups, you are undermining and damaging that ideal. You're no longer viewing humanity as a whole. You're no longer saying we want everybody to have X, Y, Z. You're saying this little group has this particular set of issues which may or may not exist. That's where the skepticism comes in. Um, and so we want to divide everyone up into all these different competing groups and deal with them specifically. It's how this idea of equality has shifted and it's a gener generational shift from the idea of treating everyone the same to taking all these different identitarian groups and treating them differently in, in special ways. Okay, so that to us seems to be counter to the idea of treating everyone equally and treating humanity as a whole. You know, when you take someone, when you reduce someone down to their identity, you are no longer thinking in terms of equality, you are no longer thinking in terms of humanity, you are breaking people up. And many of these groups have explicit ideological agendas, most specifically probably feminism, that to one degree or another run counter to those ideals of humanism. So that's, that's where we're at, I guess. Now from my point of view, and I think the view of many skeptical atheists, we think that, well, we understand, we think, what you're doing and why you think it and why you believe it. Um, we don't agree you know, and we want to argue. I think the end goal is still the same, you know, the equality. But the things that you're doing, this, this dividing people up, this creating special cases, special exceptions, and so on, and trying to push for special interpretations of laws and, and so on for these particular groups, seems to us to run counter. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that you think this has to be done in order to create that equality on a, on a practical basis you want to create a bias that corrects for what you perceive to be an existing bias so if you think say women are knocked back to a certain degree in society you want to compensate by doing that now we don't necessarily agree that women are knocked back that much so if you compensate by that and the reality is that we're already there then you're pushing them up but that's irrelevant to the, the larger point, the ideological point, the ideal, the idea point, the, the objection there is that whether or not they're currently on a level, you want to create a bias. And if we're aiming for level, we should just be aiming for level, not special rights, special considerations and so on. So I think from our point of view, you are betraying the principle, betraying the ideal, by creating a bias. Okay, I, I think we understand why you want to do it, why you think that's a good thing to do, but we disagree. I mean, the end goal should still be the same, parity for every, everybody. Um, but we see you as betraying that, that ideal and that principle. That's, that's where the conflict is, is, is the how and the why, to the, the extent to which a problem exists in the first place, and, and, and there we are, you know. Um, now I don't think you can successfully argue for equality by being sexist, by being racist, by creating prejudice on purpose, supposedly to correct whatever's going on, but you're still engaging in the very things that you seem to be fighting against, and that's why it's hypocritical, that's why it loses a lot of people, that's why it turns a lot of people against you, you know, because you're betraying that principle. And surely we can actually argue on the merits, can't, can't we? I mean, I, I, I think we understand, though we often get frustrated, where cultural atheists are coming from, where social justice warriors are coming from. I mean, the, and the, when it comes to the end goal, we broadly tend to agree that we want everyone to have equality of opportunity and to be treated the same. But we disagree on how to get there. But instead of having that argument there's these constant accusations of racism and sexism and so on, when what we're actually arguing for is equality, non-bias. Um, and that's how you get people's backs up. Can, can we please 
talk about the actual issues and make arguments that are rooted in logic, reason and evidence because being a skeptic doesn't necessarily mean that you reject an idea that's presented to you it just means you're skeptical you you need evidence you know listen and believe should not wash with skeptics you know these uh, rape culture claims need to be able to be subjected to examination and you need to be able to make an argument other than you're a misogynist you know so can we maybe elevate the discourse slightly and talk about the actual issues and the actual objections that people are making rather than <laughs> at people whenever they object please pretty please sugar on top and lastly with specific regard to this humanism plus thing i know you're not calling it that but that's what it recalls to a lot of us and can we learn from history here what happened with atheism plus big push at the start divided the community enormously and has since faded into insignificance but has created a lot of vociferous well-spoken well-researched critics of that regressive left neo-progressive viewpoint so trying to push this into another area humanism is very likely going to create exactly that same kind of backlash and put more energy and heat into the system and we'll get more people pissed off more people annoyed and we'll make the people who are already annoyed with what's going on worse so again i'm going to ask can we please not subdivide ourselves into tribes that's not what humanism has ever been about it's not what humanism should be about it should be this unifying force we're all humans we all deserve the same treatment you know we, we all deserve the same breaks in life um, we all deserve to be treated with dignity, regardless of all these other issues. Human encapsulates gay people, straight people, white people, black people, brown people, yellow people, people with polka dots, star-bellied sneeches and sneeches without. You know, it already includes everyone. You don't need these special cases and it undermines humanism to do so. So, let's have a discussion. A mature adult discussion, uh, evidentially based, reasonable, sceptical. Let's not forget who we are, why we are, and what we are.